Okay, this is the uh, practice test, the 8th grade TCAP practice test, question number 46. I'm going to show you a few ways to do this problem. Uh, the first way we're going to talk about is substitution. Then we'll talk about some version of elimination that I like. And then finally, we're going to talk about what you do if you have no other option. It's kind of like the ejector seat option when you just don't know what to do and you just got to try something. So we'll talk about how to do that as well. Now, the question says, if 2x minus 6y equals 32 and 3x plus 5y equals 6, which order pair represents the solution for x and y? And I've got all those choices there. In the last method I'm going to talk about, you're actually going to use those uh, a lot, but in the first method, not as much. So what I'm going to do is uh, try to talk about, when I do substitution, is I'm going to talk about x in terms of y, or I'm going to describe y in its relationship with x. I'll show you what that means. I'm going to flip the screen a little bit here so that I can work on a different sheet of paper. Now, I've got... Uh, my first equation was 2, sorry, 2x minus 6y is equal to 32. And my other one is 3x plus 5y is equal to 6. Now from here, I, I'm just going to change one of the equations around to get x by itself, or in some cases, I'm going to get y by itself. So in the first one, I'm just going to try to get y by itself. So it's almost like I'm going to create an equation y is on that left side of that line which I always draw down the equal sign so I need to get rid of everything on the same side of the line I need to move the thing that's furthest away from the y first so I'm gonna move the 2x now it currently is plus 2x despite the fact that you see a minus right here that minus has nothing to do with that 2 it only has to do with the 6. Uh, numbers can't see signs that exist after them, only signs that exist in front of them. So if you don't see a sign, you assume it's plus. In order to get rid of plus 2x, I'm going to subtract. By the way, the, no the reason I know it's not multiply is because I'm not trying to get x by itself. I have to move that entire term. You only multiply or divide when the number that you're moving is right next to the variable you're trying to get to. But we're not trying to get to x, we're trying to get to y. On the right side, I cannot combine x terms and uh, integer terms, or non-x terms, number terms. It's like apples and oranges. It just doesn't work. Bring everything down. Now, the only thing left on the same side of the line as y is that times negative 6. So I need to divide to get rid of times negative 6. So I'm going to divide by negative 6. these exit out and then I get negative 2 divided by negative 6 which gives me a uh, positive 1 third and then 32 divided by negative 6 gives me negative 16 over 3 or negative 5 and 1 third it's much easier if you could turn it into a fraction. If you didn't know and you're using like a TI-84+, plus, if you hit alpha and then hit y equals, a, a little menu pops up and you could put fractions in there. Now, now I know that y is equal to negative 1 3rd x minus 16 over 3. So what I can do with that information, I don't mean to hit that button, is to uh, plug in that into the other equation and see if I can just get the x to pop out. Once I do that, life becomes very simple for me. I'm going to erase this and then I'm going to circle this just to give myself a little bit of space to work. Now I've got 3x plus 5y equals 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as 3x plus 5, but instead of putting times y, I'm going to put times 1 third x minus 16 thirds. Set that equal to 6. Now it's just solving an equation really. And now that I've used this I can go ahead and get rid of it. So now it's just solving an equation. First thing I need to do after, or the next thing I need to do after I draw that line is to do the distributive property. So I do 5 times 1 third and I get 5 thirds, or 2 and 2 thirds, whatever you want. And then I do 5 times 5 sorry. 5 times negative 16 over 3. It gives me negative 80 over 3. Now I can combine uh, like terms together. That 3 plus 5 thirds thing is looking pretty good in terms of being able to combine them because of the fact that they both have an x. So I'm going to combine them and end up with 14 thirds. x minus 80 over 3. 
now we're at the parties over stage. It, it's like having a party at your house. Sometimes you'll have friends and these other people, the friends of friends, quote unquote, show up. You want to get rid of those people first at the end of the night. So I have X here and the 14 thirds is right next to it. So I'm going to get rid of the minus 80 thirds because minus 80 thirds is probably going to talk to me about Facebook or some other stuff I don't care about. So I'm going to get rid of minus 80 thirds. I'm going to add 80 over 3 to both sides. Bring down this side. Then I get 14 over 3. X is the same as 98 over 3. Now, in order to get rid of it, <clears throat> or to finally finish out what I'm going for here, I'm going to just divide 98 thirds by 14 thirds. And I get x is equal to 7. Now that I know that x is equal to 7, y is very easy to find. I'm going to go back into my other equation that I had before. Now that I know that x is 7, all I have to do is plug it in. So I do uh, 7 times 2 is 14. Get rid of plus 14 by subtracting. I don't know why I put plus there. If I'm supposed to subtract, right? Nice method. <laughs> and then I'm going to divide by negative 6 on both sides. So y is equal to negative 3. So my answer to this question would be 7 and negative 3. That's one method to do it. That's substitution. You don't like that method? You'd rather do something else? Well, we can totally do something else. What about we talk about the idea of doing elimination? This method I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to put one on top of the other and see if I can eliminate anything. If you want to treat it like a, I think in one of the micro sort of created, like combine them and then if they had different signs, I eliminated them. Let's try one uh, where we sort of go about doing it that same way. In order to do it, I need to eliminate the X's or the Y's, which means I need to pick which one I want to get rid of. And then from there, it's really simple. I just need to make sure they have opposite signs. So I'm going to get rid of X. now. The first x is a 2x, and the second x is a 3x. If I wanted to eliminate them, I need to make sure they have the same exact number, but just different signs, and that way I can combine them nicely. It makes everything look prettier if you do it that way. The easiest way to figure out what to do is just multiply them by each other. I mean, you can do least common multiple, or, I mean, uh, yeah, so you could do least common multiple, but that's insane. Just multiply them by each other. So I'm going to do this whole thing by the 3 below because that'll make it 3 times 2 is 6. Now if I do the same thing here, uh, time, this 3 I need to be, to be 6, so I need to multiply by 2. And if I want to eliminate it completely, I need to change the sign, so this is going to be negative 2. So all I did was change the sign on the bottom one and then multiply them by each other. So I do 3 times 2x gives me 6x. 3 times negative 6 gives me negative 18y. 3 times 32 gives me 96. Now on the bottom, I do negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. And negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. Now in some cases, they like to do a subtraction. I just like to be able to look at them and see if I can combine them. Uh, 6 minus 6 gives me nothing. Uh, negative 18 minus 10 gives me negative 28. I must have changed the size of the pen because it's really small now. That's better. And then uh, 96 minus 12 gives me 84. Sorry, this should be a Y. What I need to do now is just divide by negative 28. And it gives me Y is equal to negative 3. 
Now to get x, I just go back into either one of the original equations. Let's go back into this one and plug in that y value. Draw the line there, add 15 to both sides. Divide by 3, and you get 7. So your answer is 7 and negative 3. So that's another way you can do it. Another way that you could do it is graph it. All you would do is graph the two equations and see where they intersect. So the solution is actually where the lines cross each other, which you can do if you know how to use a graphing calculator. Now the other method I'm going to talk about, I am going to go back to the original screen where the question is, and talk about just substituting in the answer choices. I know it's not exactly the most mathematically appropriate way to go about your life, but it does work, so why wouldn't you use it if you don't have anything else? So I've got 2x minus 6y. This whole row, or column I should say, are the x's. The other ones would be the y's. And I need to mark this out so I remember that this is a negative 3, but other than that everything's looking good for me. Uh, so all I'm going to do in the first one is where uh, is have 2x minus 6y. Wherever the x is, is I'm going to plug in negative 3. And wherever y is, I'm going to plug in 3. Now math is really about finding truth and then sharing it with others. So this equation says that if I plug all this in, it should equal 32. And if it does, and I plug it into the other one and it works, then I'm good. So I'm going to type 2 times the quantity negative 3 minus 6 times 3 and it gives me negative 24. Well that's not equal, so you know f is not the right answer. So I'm going to mark it out. f, you're gone. So I'm going to try 7 and negative 3, which is what we tried before. So I've got 2x, or what we assume might be the correct answer. So I've got 2x minus 6y, so I plug in the x here, which is 7, minus 6 and negative 3, and it should give me 32, because I just plugged the values in where they're supposed to be. Now you have to remember that this is x and this is y, or this doesn't work. So I do 2 parentheses 7 minus 6 uh, parentheses negative 3. The reason I put parentheses is sometimes you have to square things, and it makes it easier if you just learn to put them in parentheses first. I work it out, and I get this side to be 32. I get this side to be 32 as well, which means when I plug in that answer set, I get a truth statement, which is what math is supposed to be about after all anyway. So that is the correct answer. In case at any point in this video I didn't, I did the problem and I put them in the wrong order like I gave you this at some point, I sincerely apologize for doing that. I don't think that I did, but it's possible that I did. I just thought about that just now. So the answer would be 7 and negative 3. Just make sure you have your x first and your y second, just like in the alphabet. So good luck.